Hello there. It's yours truly back again with another one. <sighs> you know, it's been interesting how things have been going thus far, but um, I still feel pretty good about my journey and I have uh, some more insightful information that I would like to share with you that I think might be beneficial. And uh, the name of this video is called Game Over. The art of detachment. Uh, detachment is a skill that is very, very vital uh, on your personal journey as well as your spiritual journey. Um, it is something that is going to be required of you in order to e elevate uh, to your next level, whatever that is. Um, and the more that you become at peace with that that you are going to that life is going to require you to detach in many areas of your life um it will allow you to grow in ways that you never know you could so as always i have a, a list of you know key points that i think um are really good in helping you learn this art and the reason why and some of the benefits that you could uh, potentially experience in the future all right, so first things first, letting go. Um, I think that is one of the hardest things that we have to do in this life is, is, is letting go. Letting go of people, places, and things. Letting go of bad habits. Letting go of certain concepts and the way we think. Uh, poor behaviors, uh, traditions, cultures, um, certain beliefs, religious beliefs. Um, there's always this process in life of, of letting go as you as you every stage every age there is some type of cycle of, of letting go and if you notice the more that you hold on to certain things those things that I just previously announced that the harder your life will become because usually that means you are unwilling to make room for the things that you truly need or desire out of a variety of factors whether that is shame guilt fear loss lack trauma like it's they're all connected and a big part of it is is that um all these things that hold up space in your life um in the grand scheme of things they don't really have much value but for whatever reason it's just too hard to let go it's painful to hang on, but it's too, it's even harder to let go. And something that you, you need to consider, the first thing for me is, is, is what I call the three A's, which is basically number one is acceptance, being able to accept a situation, a person, place, a thing for who and what it is, accept it. Don't try to minimize it. Don't try to fix it. Don't try to uh, make it, it fit the way you want it to fit like it completely accept it for what it is and when you can accept it what it is you don't have to like hold on to the narrative of what you thought it was going to be it's complete acceptance right there in that very moment and when you're able to do that little by little you're able to let go because you just accept it for what it is um, and the next one is allowance Basically, along with acceptance, you have to allow things to be what it is or what it isn't. A allow it, you know, if, if you allow people to be who they are, allow people to say what they want to say, allow the chips to fall where they may, just allow, make room for allowance. Because the less you try to dictate and control things and the more you accept things, the easier it is for you to let go. Because there's no preconceived notions. There's nothing I have to hold on to. I don't feel like I'm, I'm going to die if I lose this situation. You, you let go with love. The more that you accept and allow things to happen as they should. Versus trying to create or manipulate a scenario to turn in the way that you feel like it should be. And up next is uh, approval. Uh, you don't need anyone's approval. And that, that, that goes for your parents, your community, uh, your, your peers, your colleagues at work, your associations, affiliations. You don't need approval. The only approval you need is your own. 
because at the end of the day you are the only person that has to live this life because it belongs to you you're the only person that's going to have to deal with the consequences of your actions so it, there's no purpose in seeking outside approval for what you want and so when you don't need the approval you don't mind letting it go you don't need to check in and say hey do you you know do you approve this message it doesn't matter do do you like the message do you, do you what what do you because outside validation will keep you stuck <laughs> and so the the less you seek it the more you're able to let go the less you seek approval from other people in anything external to yourself the easier it is for you to make even hard decisions because it's totally up to you and the more that you trust yourself you know that you can make the right decision oh, no. for you so uh up next is surrender surrender the outcome the expectations concepts and understandings basically to me surrendering and letting go go hand in hand but it's basically like being able to give everything to god when I moved to California, like, I would always say, like, give it to the ocean. There's nothing that the ocean can't handle. Like, when you think about all the, like, trauma in the world and the things that happen on Earth, like, the ocean is still standing with oil spills and all this plastic and crap. The oil still finds a way to purify and, and regenerate in some type of way. You know, it takes on the problems of the world, but somehow, some way, it still manages to nourish us and and heal us in some capacity so surrender the outcome be willing to 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 not always a lot of people want to be right and that's a big thing for me that i let go of is like even though i know I, I like i'll know that i'm right but i don't care to prove it like i know what i know and i don't have to feel bad about what i know and i don't have to prove to you what i know I don't have to justify what I know. I just do. And that's it. I don't debate. I don't explain. I don't go back and forth. I surrender the outcome and I move on. Because I don't. I, I, I can. I can surrender. I don't have to go back and forth. I don't have to do all of this <laughs> mental agility back and forth trying to know. For what? If you really are the boss, if you really are the you know the king the emperor the queen the empress like if you really are like royalty honey you don't surrender like it it, it just it's i am it's it's not i think it's not it, it's possible i might be no i am and that's it so um surrender whenever things get too hard surrender like, you know, like, I guess in church when they say, like, put your problems on the altar. Because sometimes things are too big for you to handle. Some things are just out of, out of control. They're, sometimes you are outnumbered. Sometimes it, it is things where your back is against the wall and all you can do is surrender. Because you can't change it. You can't fix it no matter how hard you try. And you're doing everything you're supposed to do and it's still like, you got to surrender. You got to surrender. Because... It, it may be things that you don't know that you can't see that things that may take more time things that there's so many moving factors and so many parts that you may or may not be aware of and sometimes it just requires you to surrender up next permission you don't need permission to do anything a lot of times we seek permission from other people like you know when we're making our decisions, we need to call somebody and like, hey, this is what I'm about to do. No, you don't need other people's permission to do what you want to do. You don't need their, like I said, approval, validation, acceptance. You don't need that from other people. You don't need their permission because if you're always seeking other people's permission, you're only going to follow their rules and expectations of you. This, this People can really jade your life by always seeking their permission to be you or to make your decisions or do what makes you happy in your life you can't do that you have to you don't need permission to walk away if something is unhealthy it doesn't make you feel good your needs are not being met you're not growing you're not evolving it's not making you a better person you don't need permission to say goodbye 
You don't need permission to remove people from your life that are unhealthy, that are toxic, that are abusive. You don't need permission to do that. If anything, God gave you free will and he expects you to do that. He expects you to call a thing a thing and say, you know what, this is it. This is We've come to the end of the road. I'm done. And you don't need permission to be done. You don't need per permission to to say, you know what, I choose my freedom. I choose my mental health. I choose what is best for me and my family. I choose, you know, higher ground. You have permission to do so. So use it. Honesty. Be honest with yourself about the people around you about the things that they do that make you uncomfortable, about their their habits and how they affect you, about the condescending remarks, about the, the, the terrible things that have been said to you, but you were you made to feel like you overreacted when you know for a fact they were being very disrespectful. The inside jokes, the underhanded compliments, the secret conversations, the group chats, be honest with yourself. Be honest how they left you out and never called you. Be honest about how they made you feel. Be honest about the lies that were told. Be honest about every single aspect of your life and not just other people, but you. Be honest about the lies you told yourself. Be honest about your poor behavior. Be honest about the things that you've done that you're not proud of. It's a twofold thing. It's not just about other people. It's about you as well. Because the more that you develop and evolve, as you can see, you end up by yourself. Because a lot of people that you used to hang with aren't good for you now. Now that you've evolved and made yourself better, these people don't fit into your narrative anymore. And that's okay. Because we all have a journey to walk. But you have to be honest about it. Make no excuses for other people's behavior. I don't care how much you love them. If they're wrong, they're wrong. If they're family, if they're friends, if they're wrong, they're wrong. And never ever be afraid to call them out on their shit. Because best believe, they gonna call you out on yours. Even if you're not wrong. You can just, just be simply doing you, but people will always have something to say. But as soon as you call them out for how, how they made you feel, oh, it's a problem. It's an absolute problem. Up next, your truth. Your truth is not what you were taught or who you were conditioned to be. So you have to figure out who you are and what you need. Not based on any of those previous up, your, your upbringing, your cultural background, your socioeconomic status, your demographic of where you lived at, all of those things, that doesn't matter. You have to go back to the zero point before anybody told you who to be, how to be, not based on religion, not based on uh, societal expectations and norms. Who are you at a ground zero level? And that is how you have to start living your life. What are the things that make you happy? What are your passions? What are you good at? What are your gifts, talents, and abilities? Be truthful with yourself about your truth. For me, well, I, you know, I can't be telling people my business because, well, hell, I already have. Um, a lot, a lot of things that I've done, I've done just to. I've always done what's expected of me. You, you, you always. I've always played it safe. I've always done what seemed like the right thing to do, even if it didn't make me happy. I never wanted to disappoint anybody. I always wanted to keep the peace. I always wanted to make things right. I don't do that anymore. Like I say, I don't explain. I don't need your closure. And I don't mind saying goodbye. I don't feel the need to hold on to people. I don't need, feel the need to go out of my way because at this point in age in my life, I know 
when people are being honest and when they're not. You got one chance <laughs> to get it right or wrong. And, and I will be glad to show you the door. Because even if you do it right, don't mean you're good for me. You still could be a good person, but you not, may not be good for me. And that's something we got to be honest about. Up next. Do not care about anything. There's a great guy. His name is Gary V. And he talks about his book is I think he had a book called basically like uh, like I don't not giving a fuck or not caring about anything and and that's a very hard thing to do because we are programmed to to be overly concerned with a variety of things and me being a person that is humanitarian I truly love taking care of people and I love you know doing what I was taught is you know like God's work you know of taking care of the orphans and the disabled and the elderly and people that really need it. Those are disfranchised and the poor, like you're supposed to do that. You're supposed to help those who are in need because at one point in time, you were a person that was in need. You haven't always been on top. So therefore in order to heal the world, we gonna have to help each other. But a lot of people don't realize that they just want to get rich and, you know, and they don't really see any responsibility to anyone other than themselves. And, um, I don't necessarily agree with that, but I think like this, you must understand that this is your world and you create your reality. So the, you may think the nicer you are that, you know, yeah, good things do happen, but, um, the, the, the meaner the world gets, the nicer you are, the bigger the target you put on your back. Because... The world isn't nice and everybody isn't worthy of your goodness and you have to know that so um, don't let people make you feel like shameful or guilty for not caring you know you have to become aloof you have to become very stoic in order to balance your emotions to not be overly uh, involved in things that you have no control over some things are just not your concern. Some things that you you can't you can't fix or do nothing about, but you become all in arms about stuff that that's really none of your business. And a lot of people aren't gonna like when you don't care when you're not over like some stuff. I'm just no, I'm not spending my time. I, I don't care what you're doing. I'm I, I'm not afraid to fail. Like something that I I heard from. Denzel Washington was basically like, when you have a business, it's better to fail early. Fail big and fail early. Because it's almost better to fail early when there's no money invested and maybe people don't know who you are. And maybe you're still learning and going through the growing pains of having a business. And so you make a lot of mistakes, but I would rather do it broke than to have millions of dollars and have a business that tanks because you're making mistakes that you can't afford to make once you get to that status. Once you got millions of dollars on the line and you got employees and buildings and all that stuff, you don't need to be making rookie mistakes. You can't afford it, especially not in these times that we're living in now. So it's okay to fail. Uh, don't worry so much about what people think. Uh, say or feel because they're always going to have something to say so don't be afraid to fail don't care what people you know have to say um, some people may make the comment like who do you think you are you know and your response should be you know that bitch the one the one you love to hate you know I'm pretty sure you can come up with something and if they don't like it direct them to the VIP line it's to the left of your life because that means it's behind you it's to the left and this is a VIP line for the people that don't like me that don't agree with what I do that don't respect me that don't value me and don't support me you can get right on over here in this line because it's, it's real long okay but I'm giving you VIP access because I want you to still be able to see what I'm doing because I know you got something to say but I just don't want you having access in my life so you over to the left honey you're behind me you're you're not you're not in the present moment. You're just a, a bystander at this point. That's all you can do. 
something that I heard from the gentleman that owned, he's passed away now, but he owned uh, or started World Star. I know it might sound crazy, but he started World Star. And basically, he was like, you have to be like so centered in your life that no matter what anybody says or does to you, you are never moved. Like when you know who you are, like to the core of your being, can't nobody shake you. And people talking about you, people judging you, all that like, what I call like human shit, because it, you, you have to get, if you know, you know, man, that's all I'm gonna say. It's just, those things just don't matter. When you're on a different frequency, like people talk about you and judging you and it, it's like, okay, and then once you're done doing that, I'm still going to be who I am. So you cannot care about people and what they say or do because that will keep you bound and stuck and stagnant. And you just don't have that kind of time to waste. Also, don't care about losing friends, man. Or anyone that is not for your highest good don't care about you you can't care about people leaving your life because they gonna go like I said in the previous video people can really only love you as far as they really love themselves or they they won't they they won't respect your healing if they haven't done the healing work themselves they knew an unhealed version of you so therefore they can't respect the healed version of you they're gonna think oh you think you better oh you think you somebody or you this and that and it's just like you know you got the choice too right you know you can you can get your shit together too right nobody's trying to shit on you but I am trying to show you the way because obviously if your way was working you would be doing what I'm doing too truth be told up next starting over don't ever be afraid to start over don't ever be afraid to rebuild, rebrand, and reintroduce yourself to the world. Because sometimes the very things that you are unwilling to let go of are the very things that's holding you back. The very people that you love so much and so near and dear to your heart are the very people that don't want you to win. And that are secretly in competition with you whether you realize it or not. So never be afraid to reinvent yourself, delete all your socials, move to a new state, city, country, change your name, whatever you feel like you need to do. Don't ever be afraid to start over because there, there's no shame in rebuilding, especially if it was built on a faulty foundation because it's not going to last anyway. So if you, you know, built your first house with hay, and it came down, now you got enough money to build your house with bricks. So build accordingly. Okay? Don't don't uh don't be afraid to make changes. Don't be afraid to make cuts. Don't be afraid to trim the fat. Because it's only going to hold you back the longer you continue to act like it's not there, to act like things aren't happening. Like I said, being honest with yourself, being truthful all of these things it, it requires you to make sure that in part in 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 actually starting over it requires you to be at ground zero with yourself with your relationships with your thought processes with your behaviors and habits it requires a full reboot a full complete system refiguration all that you know, new hard drive, new everything. And that can take time. It can be costly. It can be painful. It can be heartbreaking. It can be lonely. But when you build yourself up, and no matter what happens in your life, you always have this lasting structure that you have created. Even though you may feel bouts of sadness here or there, like you know if nothing else in this world, I always got me. That even if I feel alone, I always got me and I know that God is always with me. So you're never really alone. And in due time, all things work out, man. They really do. Up next, useless connections. 
you know a big part of detachment is your attachments and having false attachments and when you wake up and realize like all these people you attach to all these people that's your friend all these people that these associations and peers and networking groups and meetups and uh, social media sites and uh, different streaming services all of these things are attachments your different emails accounts uh, whether it's digital attachments energetic attachments spiritual attachments think of all these things familial attachments to your family to you know all of these things and you wake up one day and you realize you got a, a thousand attachments and they're just draining you to fuck dry maybe a few of them give you a little bit back but for the most part you're just exerting yourself you're exerting yourself you're you're engaging you're involved you always got something to say you give it money you give it time you give it energy and all these things but you're not getting anywhere in your life you're not you're not progressing you know all these people but they're getting rich and you're just still average you know you have all of this you know um you know you well connected with different people places and things but you're not really evolving and some of those people ain't evolving either truth be told some of the people really ain't got it like that some of these people is, is con artists and they're scamming and they're lying and they're fronting and that shit's rented <laughs> so um like I say, useless attachments, always feeling the need to, to be connected to people. That's that's what we have done with social media. We make people feel like they need to be connected and then we like abuse people that are like introverts and don't subscribe to their life and we make them feel bad because they don't they don't wanna go out and they don't wanna do what everybody else do because we know that shit's fake. We know that it's a drain of your energy to be connected around all of these people. And people will make you feel bad. Oh, you're a lame. You're a nobody. You're a square. You ain't got no friends. But it's like, you know what? I have my energy. I got God. I got, like, things that can't be bought. And I know you don't have them. So as great as you think you are, I know you really ain't got shit. I know it ain't really popping like that. I know you ain't winning like that because I know God ain't in your life. So that's why I don't pay people no mind when they call me boring or lame or you a homebody or nobody. It's okay. I'm good with that. I'm okay with that. Because I'm at peace. I'm safe. And I'm well taken care of. And that's enough for me. That's more than I can say for most. Up next, causes and movements. I'm not a person that gets down with causes or movements because I feel like when it is too many people involved, you don't ever know what's going on behind the scenes. You never know what people are willing to do. And the more people that are involved, to me, the more corrupt there there's a chance that things can get. And I I don't I, I don't trust like like for me, like I never subscribe to the Black Lives Matter movement. Do I believe Black Lives Matter? Absolutely. Um, I am a black woman in America. However, I never trusted that group because it was ran by white people originally. And I don't trust, like, Huey P. Newton would be rolling over in his grave, baby. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Like, I, I'm, <laughs> no. It's a no for me. I don't, I don't trust no black organization that's ran by white people at all. No. And then now, all these years later, look at all this, this fraud that's coming out and all these houses they done bought and orange parties and all this it, it, a mess. That's why I, I mm -mm, no, I don't subscribe to movements, causes, different, because I don't know what people, people say they are for these things, but these things are never getting better. We got breast cancer awareness weeks and months every every year, but there, there's no cure. There's, there's no real, like, um... To me, real resources for people that need it. So I don't, I don't trust these people when hundreds of millions of dollars is being sent in, but there's no cures, there's no outreach, there's no real data showing the work that's being done. In my opinion, in a way that's really, you know, influence and change. And I don't connect myself to it because it's just the more money that that people have access to, the more chance it is is for corruption. You know. That's something that I learned living in California. Like a lot of people, I spoke with a lady and basically they was talking about the homeless population and how there's a possibility that they really could end homelessness in California, but they don't want to. Why? Because they get hundreds and millions of dollars in federal funding 
for the homeless problem in California. All of these nonprofits get hundreds and millions of thousands of dollars every year. And do you think they're really trying to stop it? They're really out here doing outreach? They're really creating law? No, because that's not the MO. That's not the goal. Like, that's not the goal is to get people up off, off the street into proper housing, making sure they're working and they're upstanding citizens. No, they don't care. They would much rather ridicule them and judge them and keep collecting the money from the government and, and, and maintain the dysfunction. That's what they want to do. So be careful of groups and organizations, not only that you participate in, but who you give your money to, because that's just another attachment, another way to keep you connected to something that may or may not be good for you long term. So be mindful, because you don't have any control. You can't see what's on the other side of the fence always, and sometimes it's not pretty. And lastly, emotional control. You need to make sure that um, in order to remain detached, you must have control over your emotions at all times. You know, having selective outrage and being mad about things that are none of your business. You know, like I see people on TikTok all day and they, something will happen and they will sit there and make whole dissertations and, and, and 15 part videos about shit they don't even add no money to their pocket. <laughs> like, I just couldn't imagine being that connected or invoked or involved with people places and things that I don't even know that really is none of my concern it doesn't change my life in either way you know even if it's a couple dollars here or there like it, it still doesn't really in, you know really cause a positive impact on your life so I don't feel the need to do it if it doesn't uplift me and make me a better person I'm not doing it and so I don't feel the need to respond or react to everything um I don't overly engage myself with stuff. I do try to offer like a social opinion about things that I feel that maybe that could be uplifting or give people a different perspective. But like, for example, if like I, when I, I remember when I saw the rapper take off that, I didn't even look into it. I didn't want to watch the videos. I don't want to watch none of that because that is a way to make to, well, that's another video, but it is basically a way to suck you in energetically, to have you overly emotional and feeling some type of way about somebody you don't know. And you trying to, you, these people turn into FBI agents, but they can't pay their rent on time and they waiting on student loan forgiveness, but they know everything blow for blow is what happened with takeoff and all this, you know, just different things that have happened. Oh, young thug this and gunner's a snitch, but you sitting here and, and you, you barely keeping your lights on. I could not imagine. I can't imagine that. Like, I can't imagine sitting here, you know, dedicating my whole life to something that really doesn't matter. These are rich people problems. And and I know most people are struggling in some aspect right now. So why do you dedicate your time to shit that you, that's really none of your concern? Detach, man. I don't know you. I can't be. No, I'm not, I'm not getting mad. I'm not protesting. I'm not marching. I'm not doing none of that. Because at, at seeing what I went through by myself, honey, ain't nobody marching for me. Ain't nobody standing up for Candace. Ain't nobody calling to make sure I'm okay. Ain't nobody, that's what I'm saying. We go out here and do all this yak yak. But as soon as somebody at your neck, a real killer, a real rapist, real traffickers, people at your neck, ain't nobody standing up for me. Ain't nobody calling me. Ain't nobody trying to see if me and my kid is okay. So this is why you got to be selective about programs and all this shit because I can't get nobody to help me. Not the police, not nonprofits, not nobody. But you give all your time and effort and energy trying to prove a point and try uh 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 detach. I I'm not doing none of that no more. Game over. It's a it's a sham man. And and the more that you become committed to yourself and unless you allow a lot of different, you know, just trauma and bad things to happen in your life, um, the more that you can create a, a safety net and a cushion for you and your family, the less you have to be worried about things that are really none of your concern. If it's not about you and your family, your immediate family, I, I wouldn't consume myself with it. It's why a lot of people don't have social media. 
a lot of people just d d disengage because it's just it's just always designed to keep you hooked into the mess. And I'm just I'm unplugging and detaching every day because I just refuse to sit here and be emotionally jarred about things that I have no control over. I hope this information has been useful to you. Thank you so much for your time. I'm Candice, and remember this. It doesn't cost you anything to be nice, so make sure you do it freely. Until next time, I send you peace.